We fight witches with witches. What do you say? Let me get my wand. Zelina returns, and we get our first glimpse at the big villain for the second half of the season. Let's break down Season 7, Episode 10 of Once Upon a Time, right here on What Happened. <laughs> How's it going, Oncers? The mid-season finale titled The Eighth Witch just revealed what kind of darkness we're going to be dealing with for the rest of the season. Now, as the title suggests, there are eight witches that are part of a dark coven, and they helped in casting the Dark Curse, and now Gothel is set on reuniting them in Hyperion Heights. The episode also saw the return of Zelina and a glimpse at her daughter Robin, who was the love of Alice. Plus, we get to see exactly what went down with the curse when it was cast, so let's just get this recap started. Let's talk about the realm and the curse first. We see Henry introducing baby Lucy to the gang, and when he asks where Regina is, Drizella shows up and says she's there to deliver a prophecy. She says that there will be a dark curse on Lucy's eighth birthday. We then see Drizella caught off guard and she starts to turn to stone as Rapunzel, or I'm just actually going to keep calling her Lady Tremaine, shows up and it's actually a blood magic curse that's been cast on Drizella in order to stop her from making her dark curse. Drizella warns them though before she fully turns to stone that she will be back in eight years and they're finally going to learn what true suffering is. Now eight years later on Lucy's birthday, the party is interrupted by none other than Mother Gothel, who is accompanied by five figures in dark cloaks. It turns out that Gothel, along with these cloaked figures or witches is able to break the blood magic because, as Gothel puts it, together their family can do anything, and she frees Drizella and tells her that her curse will be cast. Now everyone is frantic and pretty much trying to either find a way to stop Drizella and Gothel or find a way to remember things in the new land without magic if the curse gets cast. Regina heads to Emerald Acres Farm, which I'm guessing is in a different realm, and there she reunites with her niece Robin, who's pretty handy with a bow and arrow just like her father. She also reunites with Selina, and it seems like Robin is now 25 years old and don't worry everyone we're all confused about how time works on the show even Regina you're what 23 now 25 she sure has grown up fast not in our realm right well, I'm not here to discuss timelines. So Regina fills Zelina and Robin in on Drizella's plan and brings up the so-called creatures that helped Gothel, and it turns out that Zelina knows who they are. They're witches from a dark coven that she was actually invited to join, and they're not just witches, they're the worst of the worst witches. She reveals they dropped the coin off on her porch the previous day, which bears the symbol of the Coven of Eight, which also just happens to be that same symbol from Eloise Gardner's journal in Hyperion Heights that was also tattooed on that guy. Robin's now that if this curse was coming that she needs to you know warn her love which is Alice and Regina tells her that Hook is trying to find Rumpel for help and you know it's going to be okay but it's time for them to fight witches with witches. Hook does indeed find Rumpel who is working on his spinning wheel. He tells Rumpel that the prophecy is coming true and asks if there's any kind of magic that he has that can stop the curse. Rumpel unfortunately says nothing can stop the curse but he does pull out a little white elephant that he gives to Hook and says that this thing can keep your most precious relationship intact. Now Hook is like, oh, that means Alice. So while Rumpel says their memories won't be the same, it will ensure that they'll still be father and daughter in this new land. Hook then finds Alice hiding behind one of the trees and Alice is of course working with Rumpel. And she just hopes that, she's not scared of this curse. She just hopes that the cursed memories will be better than her current memories. Alice is also worried about losing her love and she's written her a letter which Hook promises to deliver. Now as for Henry, he still apparently has enough gas for his motorcycle to keep running eight years later. And he takes Lucy to the original enchanted forest Forest to the same tree that took Regina to Storybrooke. He's found the tree thanks to Tiger Lily, who also brings him Geppetto's axe. Now he says cutting down the tree is a last resort, and he's given Lucy his book. His hope is that if the curse happens, the two of them can actually go to the land without magic before it hits, so they can end up avoiding the curse and finding their people and bringing the book with them in order to help them believe again. Now Henry then works all day and night to cut down that tree, but he eventually hears noises and knows that they're coming after him. He runs to find Lucy and tells her to run away with the book and keep it safe, and then he he gets captured. Lucy returns to Ella and the rest of the gang and says that the witches got Henry. We then see Gothel, Drizella, and the other witches, and they've also captured Lady Tremaine, who continues to tell Drizella that Mother Gothel is just using her. Drizella's not feeding into it though and informs Lady Tremaine that in the new land, Lady Tremaine is going to be the one who thinks she cast the curse, yada yada yada, things we've already heard before, and that Drizella's going to end up ripping Anastasia from her arms forever. Regina and Zelina then show up with the whole gang and Regina is ready for that epic witch fight. Drizella then drops a bomb though saying she actually isn't the one who's going to be casting the dark curse, Regina is. Regina's like, uh, I don't know what you're talking about because no I'm not. 
But it turns out that Drizella and Goth will poison Henry's heart, and the only way to save him is to cast that curse and send him to the land without magic. Now, Regina tries to stall, saying, you know, it'd take forever to find the elements needed for this curse, but Drizella, she's already worked this out and says she has seven of the eight elements they need. The only thing missing is Regina's magic, or the magic from a witch who crushed the heart of the thing she loved most. So basically, it's either cast the curse or Henry dies, and Regina's really in a pickle here, but even Hook says that, you know, if it was Alice that was in trouble, he would cast it. And for Zelina, if Robin was in trouble, she would cast it. So Regina, it's kind of like, I guess I gotta cast this curse. Now, as the curse is being cast, we see Weaver give Alice the teacup, and he says he put Mr. Gold in a room in his mind, and the cup is the key, so all she has to do in the New Land is give it to him, and if that doesn't work, she knows what she has to do. Robin then shows up just in time as well to say she got Alice's letter, they kiss, and then we go back to where everyone else is, and Ella's like, you know what, what's gonna happen to Lucy if she can't remember her in the New Land? And that's when Hook hands her the white elephant he got from Rumple, which is why Ella and Lucy remain mother and daughter in Hyperion Heights, but Hook was separated from Alice and doesn't remember that she's his daughter. Moving on to the present time, we get to see what Ronnie, or rather Regina and Henry, have been doing in San Francisco. They traveled all that way basically to just take a really cool spin class, right? No, it's not just that. The spin class is actually being taught by the one and only Zelina, whose cursed name is Kelly. Now, Zelina as Kelly is not too happy to see Regina's Ronnie, and we learn why. She believes Ronnie ruined her daughter's life because Ronnie was the cool aunt and gave her daughter a job at the bar and then a ticket to Amsterdam instead of going off to college. Now, Regina asks Zelina if they can kind of talk and work through their issues and get a drink, but Zelina's like, uh, never. Henry then comes back and tells Regina that he has to go back to Hyperion Heights because Lucy's in the hospital, and Regina decides she really needs to stay behind because Zelina is really important to what they have to do. Regina then ends up pouring the little bit of magic from the bottle she brought with her into a big bottle of whiskey and convinces Zelina to do a shot. Now, at first, it doesn't seem like the magic worked, so Regina decides she just has to be straight up with Zelina and says that they're cursed and they're sisters, and then we see Zelina's memories finally come rushing back. Regina then fills her in on what's going on, and Zelina at first is ready to go, but then she kind of looks around and remembers the life that she's had as Kelly and she's actually happy with that and she's met someone and she's actually about to get married. Now Regina says that Selena can come back if she wants after they've saved Lucy but they really need her and Selena at first hesitates but then she's like you know what I'll go with you we need to save our family we're family that's what heroes do so they are heading back to Hyperion Heights. Now, in Hyperion Heights, Lucy is rushed to the hospital while Weaver pays a visit to Victoria because he believes Anastasia is the guardian and he needs to protect her from Gothel and Drizella. He needs to find out for sure, though, if Anastasia is the guardian because her magic would be able to save Lucy. Now, Weaver and Victoria take Anastasia down to the evidence room and he's laid out some daggers on a table and asks her to tell him which one she thinks has magic. She picks one up, but, you know, she doesn't think that that one has magic. Then the table starts shaking and those daggers go and fly into a cabinet. And Anastasia's like, maybe it's in there. Weaver then goes over and pulls the Dark One's dagger out of the cabinet and informs her that its powers can be used to help people and heal people and that Lucy really needs her help, so it's time to show what she can do. He then has her working on a spell that only she can activate in this current realm. She then feels something and says someone is here and the room starts shaking and none other than Mother Gothel shows up and knocks everyone but Anastasia out. As Anastasia tries to make a run for it, she bumps into Drizella in the hallway and of course Drizella plays the part of loving, worried sister and tries to take Anastasia to safety. Meanwhile, Rogers has been asking around town about Lucy and Tilly catches up with him and says there's something he has to see on the side of the bridge. There's a worker who's scrubbing the symbol of the Coven of Eight off of the bridge. So they go and find Weaver and it seems like Weaver has also found the coin with the symbol on it in the evidence room. So Rogers asks what that means and Weaver says it means they're here. By this time, Henry has returned and Jacinda asks if he'd read his book to Lucy. So Henry reads the part about Emma breaking the curse and he himself now realizes that he'd do anything to save Lucy no matter how crazy. And he now believes the possibility that he is Lucy's dad. And he gives Lucy a kiss on the forehead, hoping that it would be true love's kiss and it could break this curse. But nothing happens and that is because Henry has no idea that Lucy's belief has been taken. Henry informs Regina it didn't work, so Zelina says that if they want to help Lucy, they both have to get their magic back but there's only one way they can do that and that is breaking the curse but the thing is if they break the curse henry dies if they don't break the curse Lucy dies. So what can you do? It is quite the pickle here. Back to Gisela, she takes Anastasia to the so-called gathering place, which Gothel says is for her and her family. When Anastasia says what's going on, Gisela puts on the vine cuffs that Gothel gave her, grabs Anastasia's hand, and you know she says she's going to steal Anastasia's magic. But surprise, Gisela's plan actually doesn't work. 
Instead, Gothel used those vines to give Drizella's magic all to Anastasia. So Drizella acts surprised that Gothel betrayed her, but it's like, really, Drizella, you had to know this was coming. Gothel then pushes Drizella down the well, and guess who's down there as well? Victoria, who doesn't even want Drizella to look at her. Ouch, that's gonna make some awkward moments down there in that tiny well. But I do hope that maybe being in that close proximity, these two can maybe work through all their problems and then maybe they'll help be the key to destroying Mother Gothel in this coming of eight. Maybe, maybe, redemption? Gothel then takes Anastasia to another room where the dark cloaks are all on mannequins. She then reveals that they will soon find the other women who are meant to wear the cloaks, aka their sisters, and then the coven of eight will be joined. All right, so now we know that Regina was tricked into carrying out the missing part of this curse. And right now it seems like they either have to choose between Henry's life or Lucy's life but I have a feeling there's always going to be a third option and no one is going to have to die. As far as the Coven of Eight, the producers said that the witches are all in Hyperion Heights, so we'll be meeting them in the second half of the season. And in the next episode, episode 11, we will see someone who's a reference to something they haven't done before, the Haunted Mansion. And Entertainment Weekly is kind of hoping that means Madame Leota will make an appearance. Now we just have to wonder what Gothel and her Coven of Eight want and why they couldn't do what they wanted in, you know, the realm, why they have to do it here in Hyperion Heights. Because we saw Gothel go along with Drizella's plan, so it means something big has to be happening right here in this Hyperion Heights. Let's check out a promo for the show's return. This isn't over. The battle has just begun. Your mother is quite the monster. A chilling conflict of dark magic. What kind of ritual are you talking about here? Rituals that require sacrifices. With two families held in a balance. If we break the curse, Henry dies, and if we don't, Lucy does. The War of the Witches. Well, it took 10 episodes to kind of set up for what seems to be the big conflict of the season, and now we have the stakes are high because there's two lives hanging in the balance. And I'm guessing that we're going to have Weaver and Rogers working together to prevent Gothel from finding the other witches in Hyperion Heights. Maybe now that they know that the symbol and the coven, maybe they will go find these witches first. Now it's time for you to hit the comments and leave me your thoughts on this week's episode. What were your favorite moments, least favorite moments? What do you think Gothel and her coven are going to be up to? Will Regina and Selena be able to get back their magic without anybody dying? And will Anastasia actually go along with Gothel's plan or will she stay good? Will we end up seeing any kind of redemption from Victoria or Drizella? Let me know, then you can click right over here for this week's mid-season recap of Riverdale. And I will see you guys in the new year with another Once Upon a Time recap. Thanks for watching, y'all.